Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from DiscoverDoubleBass.com. That is the home of online video double bass lessons where myself and a whole range of tutors teach all different things about the double bass. So no matter what the style of music you play or your experience, I'm sure you'll find something that you enjoy over at DiscoverDoubleBass.com. Now today I'm going to be talking to you about playing walking bass lines in a 5-4 uh, time signature. So we typically play walking bass lines in 4-4, four, four, sometimes in 3, um, and sometimes in 5. So we're going to have a look at some of the different approaches and ways that you can uh, play in that time signature and a couple of things to make your bass lines really come alive. So let's get into the detail. Well, the first thing to consider when you're playing walking bass lines in 5-4 is at what point does the chord change happen? Uh, you've got to think about the harmonic rhythm, which is how many chords are happening per bar. Um, we're playing rhythm changes. Now, in the A section, most of the time, you've got two chords per bar, and we've got five beats. So what you'll find is that the, sorry, five beats, I'm holding up four fingers there, five beats. And what you'll find is most of the time that you have three, one, one, one chord on the first three beats, and then the next chord on the last two beats of the bar. So, you know, one, two, three, four, five. So on four, five, the chord changes. Now you can, of course, play two and then three in a, in a grouping of five. So you could play one, two, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. So there the chord is going one, two, and then it changes onto beat three, four, five. Okay, now we're playing a rhythm changes and that has two chords per bar in most of the A section and we're gonna play three and then two. So it, let's just have a look at it. We'll play in B flat to keep it nice and easy. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, so here you can hear the chord uh, changing on beat four. So the first um, couple of bars are B flat to G dominant seven, um, C minor seven to F dominant seven. So one, two, three, four, five, 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 etc. Now, um, you could count it one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, or yeah, one, two, three, four, five, one, if you prefer. It doesn't really matter as long as you definitely land on beat one. And while you're practicing this, I'd recommend that you get a metronome that accents beat one, because if you're not familiar with playing in five, four, it's likely that you'll drop a beat at some point as you're, you know, focusing on uh, creating these kind of cool lines that we're coming up with. Well, let's have a look at the common kind of walking bass line patterns that you can play. And there are three really common ones that you'll hear a lot of the time. And the most basic is just to play one note per chord. And as I said earlier, we're dividing the bar five into three beats, one, two, three, and then four and five. So one, two, three, four, five, 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 four, and etc cetera, etc cetera. so you can continue on from there another really common rhythm is to take the first three notes of the bar and divide it into two so you'll be playing dotted quarter notes or dotted crotchets if you use that term and then just play um, a half note or a minim if you use that term on beats four and five uh, it sounds a bit more complicated than it is so let me just play it for you So I'm sure you've heard that rhythm before, it's fairly common. Now, the natural progression for that is to play two different notes on beats four and five. So here you're just playing, you play in the bar, you play two dotted quarter notes and then two quarter notes on beats four and five. Again, let me, let me show you, it's a bit more straightforward than it sounds. sounds like you're going long long short short long long short short long long short short um, and I kind of I like that rhythm it definitely adds a bit more variety to your bass lines you can also play one note per beat as well and that's the final rhythm to consider so we've actually got the uh, keeping it really simple just one note per chord we've got uh, doubling the first uh, two notes in the first three beats and then a long note on four and five, then the same thing, but uh, playing on each beat, beats four and five. And then lastly, we've got uh, to the point where you're playing five notes in a bar. So. So 
your typical sounding walking bass line where you're just playing on each beat and really grooving away. Um, and just be really careful that you're outlining the chord changes strongly and you're focusing on landing strongly. Now just to finish off, I wanted to show you a pattern that I played in the bridge and it's just a sequence. We're still walking in 5-4, we're still playing one note per bar, uh, sorry, one note per beat. Um, at this stage, just a regular driving, walking bass line, but I add in a really strong sequence of notes across two bars that adds tension and then resolves onto the beginning of the A section for the next, um, the next bar. So in the bridge, we have two bars of D7, two bars of G7, two bars of C7, two bars of F7, and it resolves onto B flat, which is the top of the next um, section, the A section. Now, at this stage, I think it works really well to do it over the F7 because you have this tension and then resolution, but you have to land strongly on ideally the root or chord tone of the, of the B flat for this to work. Um, it doesn't really matter which note you start on. I'm playing two note groupings and I'm playing either the third and the seventh or the root and the fifth. Um, it's probably easier if I play it for you. So let me start from the D7, we'll play through the bridge and then you'll hear how it progresses. Okay, D7 first of all. Now on G7, going to C7. top I kind of got a bit distracted there and started playing something else in thumb position which was uh, taking the exercise a bit too far. What we're focusing on here is that tension that you get from the sequence that lasts two bars. So it's five groupings of two. One, two, 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 three, two, four, two, five, two. And the notes are the third and the seventh and the root and the fifth. So it starts on the seventh, third, root, fifth, third, seventh, fifth root. You can just think about moving up to the next note of the arpeggio on each string and essentially it's E flat A, F C, A, E flat, C, F, E flat A and then finally you've got B flat at the top. Well, I hope you found this useful and it's encouraged you to go and practice uh, jazz standards in 5-4, you know, take five. You can use uh, rhythm changes like I've done or, you know, any other kind of jazz standards that you can find in five because we don't play them very often and it means that we're less familiar. 5-4 isn't a harder time signature to play in, it's just a less familiar one. Um, and I know that I certainly am less comfortable in five. And you know, the way to get past that is to get some time in the practice room. So, you know, look at these different rhythms, explore the different ways that you can break up the time and have fun. And then when you next get to play 5-4 on a gig, it'll really come together. Now, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you have, please press like and subscribe on YouTube. And if you want to learn more from me, you can go and check out my full length course, Creating Walking Baselines. Okay, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.